Wonderful. I tell you, we've been getting that Gulf Coast sunshine, and there's a whole bunch of it still left in the grass out there. Um, it's great. We need the rain. But I tell you, it's just great to know that God protects us. Um, but I have friends out in Baton Rouge. Um, one of my roommates at Howells Anderson College was Bobby Buchanan, B.G. Buchanan's son. And he is now, of course, um, taken over the pastorship of Central Baptist and his family, the church completely underwater, their homes completely underwater. Um, so while God has been protecting us, at the same time, he has allowed some things to happen over there that I believe are going to result in some glory coming down. Um, but uh, please keep in prayer for our friends over in, on the other side of the river over there. I know we like to, we like to talk bad about the Cajuns. Um, and, and my family... We have Cajun blood, and we'll rather talk about our family in prison than our Cajun family. I'm just saying. Um, but um, they're still our friends and our family. Let's keep them in prayer, please. Um, but while we're here now, how about grabbing your hymnal? And this is going to be a hard one to find. It's hymn number two. That's right. Stand up and let's sing glory to his name. Amen. That's him number two. Down at the cross where my Savior died, Down where from cleansing from sin I cried, There to my heart was the blood applied, Glory to His name. Glory to His name, glory to His name, there to my heart was the blood applied, glory to His name. I am so wondrously saved from sin, Jesus so sweetly abides within. There at the cross where he took me in, glory to his name, glory to his name, glory to his name. There to my heart was the blood applied, glory to his name. Come to this fountain so rich and sweet. Cast thy poor soul at the Savior's feet. Plunge in today and be made complete. Glory to His name. Glory to His name. Glory to His name. was the blood applied glory to his name amen now pastor will attest to this here's what we see glory to his i don't know how y'all can sing with those big frowns on your faces but while you're standing go ahead and turn to him number 351 and we're going to sing tell it to jesus that's him number 351 and this time, you, you are allowed to smile in Baptist churches. It's all right. You can smile. Put that smile up there and sing it out for Jesus. Amen? Are you weary? Are you heavy-hearted? Tell it to Jesus, tell it to Jesus. Are you grieving over joys departed? Tell it to Jesus alone. Tell it to Jesus, tell it to Jesus. He is a friend that's well known. You've no other such a friend or brother. Tell it to Jesus alone. 
blue the tears flow down your cheeks unbidden tell it to jesus tell it to jesus have you sins that to men's eyes are hidden tell it to jesus alone tell it to jesus tell it to jesus he is a friend that's well known you've no other such a friend or brother tell it to jesus alone are you troubled at the thought of dying tell it to jesus tell it to jesus for Christ's coming kingdom are you sighing? Tell it to Jesus alone. Tell it to Jesus, tell it to Jesus. He is a friend that's well known. You've no other such a friend or brother. Tell it to Jesus alone. Amen. Amen. All right. If you will, let's go to the Lord in prayer. Father, we thank you tonight for your blessings. We thank you, Father, for uh, every opportunity it is to be in your house. Uh, Lord, it's uh, uh, just this special uh, time of the week. This Wednesday night service is uh, the, the best service to me in the week because it's a time to come in out of all of the that's been going on this week since our Sunday service, and it's kind of get us to re, be refueled, reflamed, refired, and uh, and ready to finish the week strong. Father, we just pray this evening, Lord, that you would speak to our hearts, encourage us, strengthen us, Lord, through the Word, uh, and then, Lord, we pray, uh, Lord, for those who, Lord, are struggling. Lord, there's uh, every one of us here tonight have a need, or we know someone who has a need. Uh, Lord, I've, I've been dealing with several issues this week, just uh, dealing with folks who are hurting, dealing with folks who are uh, having uh, difficulties in their marriage, having difficulties, uh, Lord, in their life. And uh, Lord, I just pray, uh, Lord, that you would meet the needs of the people. Uh, Lord, that you would help us to realize, uh, Lord, that uh, our worry and our angst and our anxiety, all of those things are... are uh, Destroy, destroying us and, and, and taking, Lord, the, uh, the joy from our lives. Lord, I just pray that you'd help us, Lord, to put that all over onto you. And uh, as the scripture says, to, uh, to give it to you, to roll it over uh, onto you. And Lord, I just pray, that, Lord, that we do that. We ask your blessings tonight again on the service. Uh, encourage and strengthen for us in Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Thank you. And you may be seated. Appreciate you being here tonight. Uh, just reminding you that Sunday, that's Sunday, is our anniversary. 55 years of ministry in Garth Road, uh, at Garth Road Baptist Church, and we are here. Uh, we're continuing to uh, do the work. In fact, uh, we've got, uh, I guess, maybe say more ministries or different types of ministries uh, than we had when we first began, even though we had quite a few ministries back then. Uh, it's just kind of changed over. And uh, so uh, it, it's amazing what the Lord has done with us and allowed us to do and to accomplish. Uh, those that remember the old location, uh, the missionaries and the preachers that come through and remember uh, the old buildings and, and all of that and come out here and say, man, God has been so good to you. Uh, and he has been good to us to bring us to where we are. And uh, so we're thankful for that. Uh, as Brother Roy was mentioning uh, the flooding in Louisiana, back on the back table there is a, uh, uh, a notice uh, for a Louisiana relief. And uh, one of our families, Miss Nina Barbie, has a lot of family in the Baton Rouge area as well as other parts of Louisiana that have been inundated uh, with the flooding. Uh, Central Baptist Church was... Uh, uh, all underwater, Brother, brother uh, B.G. Buchanan, the par pastor emeritus, the founder of Central Baptist Church, and his son, uh, Bobby Buchanan, uh, both lost their homes and everything in them, um, as well uh, as many others and their fa families and their churches. And um, so uh, uh, we, Miss Barbie contacted me and she said, is there something that we can do? 
And I said, well, there's not a whole lot that we can do from this distance, but we can because many have lost their clothing uh, and have no food. And uh, so uh, we are going to collect uh, food and uh, non-perishable food items. You know, so don't bring a gallon of milk, okay? <laughs> you can bring cases of water. You can bring uh, cases of, uh, you know, things like that, uh, you know, in the canned goods, you know, not everybody likes cotton. Well, we're talking about Cajuns and Louisianans. <coughs> I was going to say not everybody likes collard greens, but uh, maybe they do. I don't know. Uh, but, you know, be, be mindful. You know, you go through your cabinet and you start pulling out canned goods. Look at the expiration dates. Okay. If you're not going to eat it, somebody else is not going to eat it. Okay. And there's no need for us to send it to them and then throw it away. Um, but uh, things like that uh, uh, that are uh, non-perishable would be great to send. Um, you know, if you uh, want to go to Walmart, or I, I have found, believe it or not, that Kroger has really good towels for a really good price. And so, uh, but, you know, towel sets, you know, washcloths, uh, things like that could be used as well as clothing. Uh, there's, if you're like me, um, when you go through your closet, there's uh, uh, four seasons. Okay, <laughs> there's four seasons. It's not it's not winter, spring, summer, and fall. It's uh, when I was skinny, when I was a little bit not skinny, when I was fat, and when I was fatter. Okay, so I mean that's the way my closet segregated right there. You know, nope, can't wear that one. Nope. Well, that one just almost, and then man, this is just hanging all over me. You know, so. It's time to go buy some new ones. Well, uh, if you go through your closet and, you know, again, if you go through your closet and you've got stuff that's stained up and you've got stuff that's ripped and torn and you're not going to wear it, don't send it to somebody else to wear. That just does not show a good Christian character, okay? Uh, but we're going to do that as soon as we get uh, what we can. Miss Nina says she would take it to Lake Charles. And someone from her family will meet her there, and they will transport it uh, where it needs to go. Uh, so uh, this will kind of be an ongoing for a little while, uh, simply because of the of the nature of the flooding. In fact, it's going from uh, Mexico up through Texas, uh, up into Missouri, all across over to uh, uh, New York, uh, and it's a stationary front. So it's not going anywhere anytime soon, evidently. Uh, so do be in prayer. Uh, for the families there, uh, be in prayer for um, uh, that the Lord would use this opportunity uh, to bring people to Him. You know, I was um, uh, interested in listening to Brother uh, Antonio uh, Sunday when he was talking about the fact that uh, because of all of the unrest and the uh, the violence and all that goes on in Monterey, uh, that people are turning to the Lord. And that's what should happen. And, uh, you know, America, when we hit 9-11, uh, the churches were filled for a few weeks, but nothing changed. And, uh, you know, we need the Lord again. And folks are praying for revival uh, all across our nation. And uh, I think God is, is trying to get us to awaken to the fact uh, that we do need a revival. And so be in prayer, if you will. Uh, by the way, while we're needing revival and we're praying and we're just really uh, asking the Lord for revival and asking not only for revival for our nation and for our church and for ourselves, uh, remember the fact that uh, when with revival comes the devil. With revival comes the devil. Because he's going to fight any and every thing that we're going to do to try to evangelize and reach people with the gospel. So when you get mad at something and you get upset or you get, you know, angry or whatever, remember the devil is real and he's going to fight. And if he can keep our church at, at odds with each other and, and having difficulties and all of that and we're fighting our own battles, we're not fighting the, the main battle and that's for the souls of men. So be very, very diligent to understand that the devil is fighting any and all attempts to reach people with the gospel. All right? Again, thank you for being here, Brother Roy.
ahead and grab your hymnal one more time and turn to hymn number 183 and stand up and sing with me, Oh, How I Love Jesus. That's hymn number 183. There is a name I love to hear, I love to sing its words. It sounds like music in mine ear, the sweetest name on earth. Oh, how I love Jesus, and oh, how I love Jesus, oh. How I love Jesus, because He first loved me. It tells me of my Savior's love, who died to set me free. It tells me of His precious blood, the sinner's perfect plea. Oh, how I love Jesus, and oh, how I love Jesus, oh, how I love Jesus, because he first loved me. It tells of one whose loving heart can feel my deepest woe. Who in each sorrow bears a part That none can bear below Oh, how I love Jesus And oh, how I love Jesus Oh, how I love Jesus Because he first loved me Amen. Book of Genesis, chapter 50. Verse 20 says, But as for you, ye thought evil against me, but God meant it unto good to bring pass as it is this day to save much people alive. One of the things that we want God to do when ask God for things is just to give us good. And that, that's what we want. we want. We want good. But the problem is that we have sin. God has to fix that. And we're stubborn. I know it's hard to believe, right? But but it's, it's really true. We don't want to give up that sin. As Pastor said just a minute ago, when there's strife, when there's problems, people turn in mass to the Lord. The problem is God's not waiting to do, not wanting to do that to make you turn. He's got all kinds of other ways he's trying to get our attention. The good ways, but we don't pay attention. So, just like our children, he has to get our attention. I'm with Brother Roy. This thing that's going on in Louisiana and, and the rest of it, it's going to be for the glory of God. But it's going to require us to do our part. There are people who have questions. Why does God let this happen? It's our fault. I'm not saying those people specifically deserved it, but we all sin. This world's a fallen place. He's calling us to him. Amen. That's right. That's right. Cleaning the, God's got to clean the plate before he can give us a new dish. So as we receive the offering, remember that your tithes, the one-tenth, what that goes for is this facility and paying for the electricity air conditioning, praise God, and everything that goes on here. Then you, we have the offerings. That's the above and beyond the 10% that you give because you want to see God's work prosper. That's, 
That's what goes out to our mission field. That's what goes out to the RU. That's what goes out to try and help spread the gospel outside of these four walls. Those who receive the offering, be thankful that you have something of which you can return 10% to the Lord and be a cheerful giver. We're so thankful Brother Phil's back with us and we're going to ask him to pray. Thank you, Brother Kurt. Let us pray. Heavenly Father, please forgive me for all where I failed you, Lord. I want to ask that you uh, bless the service tonight and ask that you bless this offering. May it go to your boy, Lord, and please be with uh, all those in Louisiana who are suffering right now and those who want to write for uh, show yourselves to them and uh, please uh, uh, bless them and bring them to a saving knowledge and please give them all that they need for all they have. All this I ask in Jesus' name and I thank you for it. Amen. Amen. Forgive me for sitting down during the Brother Kurt's long speech there, but I've been standing on my feet most of the day, and uh, you, you realize that I've been out of school for a couple of months, and that's like getting all the new things going, you know. So uh, my knees hurt, my legs hurt, my back hurts, my head hurts, my well, I just say my whole body hurts, you know, from from this little hair right here to the soles of my little feet, and so uh, uh, I uh, I will do my best to uh, to stand, keep, remain standing during the message. If I go and sit down over there, uh, you'll understand. Uh, we had a great day today. We honestly did. While I'm talking, you can turn to Psalm 19. Uh, we had a great day today, even though we were. Uh, met with a deluge as the majority of the kids were coming to school and we were getting phone calls well we're stuck over here in this area and we're uh, we're trying to get there we have a family that's uh, literally stuck in Mississippi um, they can't get across Louisiana and uh, they're just you know uh, it, their kids are here the kids were in school but mom and dad are in Mississippi <laughs> and so uh, anyway um, Another family brought them to school today, but I mean, it, it. This is our eighth year, beginning of our eighth year, and in the eight years that we have had open house from the very first one, we have I think had one that it did not rain, one. And of course, it rained yesterday, and then today, Nan said, "Well, didn't it rain last year on the opening day of school?" I said, "I don't remember." I said, but it's possible. I said, but I mean, it was coming down so hard uh, that I mean, it was in sheets, literally. And uh, so, anyway, we, we got school going, and we got in. I think we had the majority of the students that were enrolled here, and uh, so uh, just uh, uh, be in prayer. Uh, all of our teachers, I went around to the to the classes, and unless they lied to me, told me they had a really good day, and. Uh, of course, they probably don't want the boss to know that they, you know, were ready to uh, pin one of the children up on the on the wall and make an example out of him. Uh, but uh, you know, we our, we had I had one four year kindergarten kid that I thought we're going to have a struggle with him, and he came yesterday with his mother, and he wouldn't even talk to Miss Jessica. And, I mean, he just and uh, but he came in today like he grew up between yesterday and today and uh he didn't cry he didn't you know he did what he was supposed to do and so i'm going <laughs> but then we do have a set of twins 
And so, <laughs> and one of them is very, very active. Okay, so uh, we, we, we hit the road running today, and uh, so uh, then we will be back again tomorrow and Friday, but we got a, we got a holiday coming. We got a holiday coming. Can I get an amen? <laughs> Hallelujah. Praise the Lord. We have a holiday coming. In fact, I think we have one holiday every month. Except for May. But then we got to school. So. Hey, okay. I'm all for it. The more the better. The, the, the more the merrier. Psalm 19. Let's look at verses 1 through 6. If you will follow along as I read, says the uh, to the chief musician, a psalm of David. So David recorded this psalm. One of my favorite psalms in the uh, book of Psalms, one of many of my favorite psalms in the book of Psalms. The heavens declare the glory of God, and its firmament showeth forth his handiwork. Day unto day utter speech, and night unto night showeth knowledge. There is no speech nor language where their voice is not heard. Their line is gone out through all the earth, and their words to the ends of the world. In them hath he, that is God, set a tabernacle for the sun, which is as a bridegroom coming out of his chamber, and rejoiceth as a strong man to run a race. His going forth is from the end of the heaven, and his circuit unto the ends of, of it, and there is nothing hid from the heat thereof. Speak to you tonight on the subject, the heavens declare the glory of God. Let's pray again. Father, we just ask your blessings, uh, Lord, upon the truths of the word of God. Thank you, Father, for uh, every opportunity that we have, uh, Lord, to honor you and to serve you and to, Lord, study your word. Lord, the message tonight will be very simple. It won't be uh, detailed with uh, a lot of, uh, of, of deep theological uh, uh, jargon. But Lord, it will be, uh, Lord, a truth uh, that is set down in the Word of God that we can understand and that we can apply to our lives. Bless us tonight, for it's in Jesus' name we pray. Amen. As we look at this psalm tonight, and I think about the heavens declare the glory of God. I don't know about you, but I'm one of those cloud watchers. When I was a kid, I would lay in the grass, and I would look up, and I would see the fluffy clouds, and, and I would say, well, there looks like a rabbit, and this looks like this. And you know, Do you do that? I, I even do it driving down the road. In fact, the other day, yeah, yeah that's not a good idea, uh, believe me. The other day I was driving down Garth Road, and Garth Road is never a good place to daydream or look away. And I looked up, and it was kind of like right over where the Hampton Inn would be. There was a perfect cat in the clouds. Now, I don't, I'm sorry, if, you, if you're a cat person, I'm not a particular fan of cats, okay? I, I, they just, you know, I, I, they don't. But honestly and truly, I, I, lo I was looking up, and this cat was sitting down. You could see its tail. You could see, and, and in the tail there were some, like, bands where the clouds had kind of broken. And there was just little, little, I mean, little bands, little finger bands. It's not like this big, huge thing. And you could see the body come up, and you could see one paw was up this way, and between you could see light, okay? And then there was another paw over here, and it was the same way. You could see the roundness of the face. You could see an inset where, where uh, the eye would be and the ears. And I'm sitting there, and I'm looking at that, and I'm thinking, wow. That is amazing, huh? Well, about the time that I was admiring these, um, this cat that God placed in the sky... I thought, I'm driving, and I looked, and there was, I, I mean, traffic is stopping, and I'm down, you know, but it was so magnificent, and I'm thinking, 
I wish I could get a picture of this. Nobody would believe this. It was absolutely beautiful. You know, and, and I see all kinds of shapes and all kinds, you know, but <laughs> it's not a good thing to do it while you're driving, Miss Brenda. You know, I, I agree. Okay, keep your eyes on the road. I mean, that's worse than texting and driving. At least you're looking this way, not this way. You know, I, I mean, honestly and truthfully, the sky is different every day. Every day the sky is different. If you're like me and you have a dog that wakes you up at 5 o'clock in the morning or so to go out and do her business, uh, you get to see the sky. You get to see the, uh, the, the sunrise. Now, I'll be perfectly honest and frank with you. Every once in a while, there is a gorgeous sunrise. But down here, they're very few and far between. I'll be honest with you. When Michael was in the hospital back a couple of years ago, and our window faced the east, and I, I got up early one morning, the, the sun was shining, and it was a gorgeous sunrise. And I, I took a picture of it. I wasn't driving for the Kyle. I was standing in the window at the hospital, and I took a picture. I still have it on my phone, by the way. I mean, God paints such beautiful artwork, whether it be in the clouds, you know, whether it be in the sunrise or the sunset. You know, I, I was looking this morning as I came out of my neighborhood, and I was coming down Garth Road, and I had two thoughts. We're fixed to get rained on. But to look at the clouds in the, in the south, they were absolutely beautiful. There were rain clouds. There were storm clouds. I mean, you could, I mean, you could see the blackness and you could see the grays and the, and, and the whites and all of that. I mean, it didn't make a cat, you know, something tangible like an alligator. I mean, but it was just, it was just the, the, the rolling of the clouds. And, and all, it was absolutely beautiful. And you come back to Psalm 19, the heavens declare the glory of God. When you look out and you see God's creation, God's paintbrush, I am just amazed at Miss Barbara Ferguson. Have you seen some of the paintings that she's painted? I mean, she, she learned a, a, a few months ago that she could paint. Took a little art course down at the at the Remington Park, and and the lady said, "Hey, you, you know, it's not expensive. Just you know, and and learn that she could paint, and she paints just beautiful, beautiful pictures. You know, and, and you think, man, this is somebody who who has a talent to paint. But when you stop and you consider what she's painting, is God's creation. I don't know about you, but I love Thomas Kincaid pictures." He paints with light. And, and it, it, it's, they're such beautiful, gorgeous pictures. But what he paints is God's creation. The heavens declare the glory of God, and his firmament show forth, showeth forth his handiwork. When you stop and you consider, when you look up, whether it be the, the, the early morning sky, the afternoon sky, or, or the evening sky, or the late night sky, there's always something to behold. The stars at night are big and bright. <laughs> I, just, I tell you, if you thought what goes on in this mind at certain times, you'd be afraid. The stars at night. You know, I, I look up there at, at night and I see the Big Dipper and I see the different planets and things like that. And I'm thinking, this, this is amazing. That's God's handiwork. I mean, the, the, different, the different designs, the different uh, constellations, the different uh, uh, things that he's, painted, he's put up there in, in, in star form is amazing. Louis Gagliano, and if you're able to find this on YouTube, it's phenomenal. I think it's called Our Glorious God. And... It's, it's not King James, so don't berate me. But he starts talking about the immensity of the universe. And he takes a little golf ball. 
and he begins to tell you how many golf balls it would take to cover the earth. And he begins to tell, and, and, and it's, it's in the millions and billions and all of these, and he, and he just keeps expanding, expanding, expanding. But because of our Hubble uh, telescope and other areas, I'm thinking, my hair's ringing. Because... <laughs> Can y'all tell I'm tired? <laughs> I'm just... <ooh>. A <laughs> <I> squirrel! <laughs> but he begins to take us on a trip through the solar systems. The great Milky Way. And, there, and, and he begins to show the, the, the eye of God. There's an actual constata- constellation that looks like an, an eye. And the Bible teaches us that God looks down from heaven. And, and, and there's so many of these things that he, that he just shows that uh, there's a cross and there's all of these different uh, uh, constellations and solar systems out there that look, all, look like all of these things that God talks about. It's an amazing trip through space. For someone to say that this just happened is ridiculous. You see... The heavens declare the glory of God, his firmament showeth forth his handiwork. I mean, it is the very handiwork of God's creation. We're seeing things now that our great, 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 great ancestors never were able to see. Because of the increase in technology, because of of being able to send our spacecrafts further and further and further from, uh, from the earth to to see these things and to, uh, and to take pictures of these things. It just shows us the immensity of what God's creation truly is. And yet with all of his immensity and all of his creation and all of that, he brought us together on one ball. And he fixed it so that we would have life and we would have breath and we would have water and we would have sustenance and all of that. Can you imagine, can you grasp in your mind's eye what the psalmist is saying here? He didn't have the technologies that we have. I'm not, I don't even know back then if they even had something that would be something comparable or comparable uh, to, the, uh, to a telescope at all. To be able to see beyond the scope of the ceiling that we see. The next verse was interesting to me. And I've read this verse. I've studied this verse. I've memorized this chapter uh, and and try to keep it memorized. But notice what he says in, in verse number two. He says, day unto day utter speech and night unto night showeth knowledge. And I've, I've read that verse and I've read that verse and I've read that verse. And it never really dawned on me what it was saying. Day unto day utter speech. What, what? I mean, every just like the cat, just like the solar system as an eye, or the solar system that looks like a cross, or the solar system that that, that talks about God's creation. I mean. That speaks volumes every single day. We look at God's creation and it speaks to us. Now, some people will look at it and they say, well, that's just, uh, that's just something that happened. That, that, that was a big bang. That was uh, uh, just uh, uh, a, a happenstance. You cannot in all uh, good conscience and knowledge say that this just happened. You can't do that. But it reminds me back to first uh, to the first chapter of Romans where it says this. For the wrath of God, verse 18, is revealed from heaven against un- all ungodliness and unrighteousness of men who hold the truth in unrighteousness. 
Because that which may be known of God is manifest in them. Manifest in what? The heavens. And I, I, I never connected these two. I never melded them together. Why? Because the heavens declare the glory of God and day unto day utter speech. It's like God's telling us, look, here I am. Whether it be in the, uh, in the, in the, in the clouds that, that make these, these beautiful pictures or whether it be in the storm clouds or, or whether, you know, the other day somebody posted on Facebook uh, lighthouses. And that immediately caught my attention because I, I, I love lighthouses. It, it's a light to my soul. It, it, it's what helped me to find the Lord Jesus Christ. And, and, and there's, these lighthouses are sitting out on these pencil, peninsulas. And, and they're there and the storms are raging or the, or the waves are beating up against them and encircling them. And it was it was a phenomenal look. Just on one of them, the, the darkness of the clouds and the uh, and and all. But in, in the light, as the light flashed, it flashed across across the darkened sky. Folks, you can't make this stuff up. But you see, he says here in Romans chapter one, he says, because that which may be known of God is manifest in them, for God hath showed it unto them. For the invisible things of him from the creation of the world are clearly seen, being understood by the things that are made, even his eternal power in Godhead, so that they are without excuse. Jesus tells us that not one word of, the, of his word will pass. Not one jot or one tittle. You say, well, I, I never heard of God. You know there's a God. This didn't just happen. We're studying American history. Don't tell my kids because... Not American history, American literature. Uh, don't tell my kids because this is coming up. But there... When our ancestors came to America in the 1600s, they landed and they and they brought with them hopes of finding one uh, group of finding gold just laying on the ground, diamonds. They almost lost their colony because they didn't come prepared to sustain themselves. But literature comes in two ways. It comes orally by tradition or it comes written. And the Iroquois Indians who who were present before we were, by the way, had a oral tradition about creation, even about the tree of life. And the fact that because of sin that was plucked up, they didn't have a Bible. They didn't have a preacher. They didn't have someone to teach them this. Where did it come from? It came from within the heart. Because man was created with a, with a desire to know God. And it's amazing. It is very amazing to go and to listen as, uh, as uh, um, Elliot, Sam Elliot, that went... Uh, and was murdered on, in, the, uh, in the islands when he was working with cannibals. Jim Elliot. I knew Sam wasn't right, but Jim Elliot. But they had a form of worship. He just had to teach them the right form of worship. But he made a ma major mistake and he lost his life. But it's very interesting to know that his wife Elizabeth was able to continue a work and the first work she started was with the Indians that actually killed her husband. Now, you say, oh, all that just, that's just coincidence. No, it's not coincidence. There's no such thing as a coincidence when it comes to God's work and God's power. 
So when we go back and we look at our text and we say the heavens declare the glory of God, his firmament showeth forth his handiwork, uh, day unto day utter speech, and night unto night showeth knowledge. What do we see in the night that we, that we would say that, is, that we could find knowledge in? The perfect alignment of the stars, the North Star. At night, that's what the sailors looked for. That was their guiding light. But may I suggest to you that when Jesus Christ was born, there was a star. And it led them to where? To where the young child lay. You can't, you can't make this stuff up, folks. Notice what he says in verse number three. He said, there is no speech nor language where their voice is not heard. Think about that. Sunday morning, we had English, we had Spanish, we had sign language, and we had uh, Latvian. Languages represented here. Maybe a few others that I didn't know about. But think of all of the languages across the world that we live in. All the variations of Latin uh, languages and Asian languages and European languages and, and all of these languages that, that, that we have here. On, and then languages that we've not even yet discovered. We have missionaries working with tribes who have no written language. No written Bible. And they're going in and learning a language and putting it in print so that they can teach them how to read the Word of God. But there is no speech nor language where God's voice is not heard. None. For the deaf, for the blind, for those who speak languages that we would even desire to know. We have uh, three young boys in our school this year. They're from Poland. They've been in, they have been in the United States exactly eight months this week. They speak really good English. They didn't speak any English when they came. But even in Poland, God's voice is heard. Where is it heard? <laughs> Notice in verse number four. Their line is gone out through all the earth and their words to the end of the world. In them hath he set a tabernacle for the sun. Isaiah says line upon line, precept on precept. What is it that, that, that God has done for us? What is it that, that, I mean, every avenue. I was... Brother Ed and I years ago went to listen to uh, Neil Frank. And uh, he was doing a seminar here in Baytown on hurricanes. That's good information to know. And as we're sitting there listening to his, to his speech and, and, and telling us about the hurricanes and the purpose for hurricanes, he made this statement and I've never forgotten it. He said, why do we have hurricanes? He says, during the winter, all of the cold air comes south. And so it comes across the, the Rockies, it comes across, and, and, it, and it moves its way this way, and it, it brings these cold fronts through. It comes from Canada, comes down, and it brings all of these cold fronts through. He said, somehow they have to get back. And he said, they go back in the way of hurricanes. And then he quoted a verse in the Word of God that talked about the circuits of the wind. Isn't that amazing? 
all upon that, line upon line, precept upon precept. I mean, their line has gone out. There is a, there's a set order of God's creation that we see every single day. The sun is always going to come up in the east. It may be this side of the east, or it might be that side of the east, but because of the of the of the rotation of the earth and, and, and the different seasons and where the the, the earth is, is at at that particular time. But it's always going to come up in the east. It never comes up in the north. It never comes up in the south. And it never comes up in the west. But it will always set in the west. Always. God's line. I mean, when you stop and you consider how that God works this out, and then he, he, he makes a statement within that verse, uh, at the end of that verse, and he says, In them hath he set a tabernacle for the sun. The sun is exactly where God wants it to be. If you've ever studied science, and I'm sure you did somewhere along the way in, in your schooling, the earth is a, a spherical ball, and it's tilted on an axis, 22 and a quarter degree, something like that, tilt. And you say, well, why is it tilted? Why? It, 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 would, it would wobble, it would spin out of control because it's not perpendicular. It's not exactly where it should be at because it's tilted. But God placed it that way. We don't wobble out in space. But we're tilted and we're turned so that we'll be at the sun at, a, at, the, at certain times. And in the winter, we're further away from the sun. That's where we get our winter, spring, summer, and fall. Did that just happen? Oh, no. That wasn't just something that that the Big Bang did. And, well, oh, well, yeah, well, let's, let's make this big ball and let's, not, let's knock it off, off, off center. No. God did that and God put that tabernacle there and he placed us exactly where we needed to be in relationship to the sun to get the heat that we need and not burn up. God did that. Notice, if you will, verse 5, which is as a bridegroom coming out of his chamber and rejoices as a strong man to run a race. Every morning, that brightness of that sun, unless it's like today. But you realize, regardless of how many clouds we have and how many uh, how obscure the sun would be, but it's always there. Southeast Texas, we know it's there whether we can see it or not. Verse number six, his going forth is from the end of the heaven and his circuit unto the ends of, a, of, a, of it and there is nothing hid from the heat thereof. The heavens declare the glory of God. Isn't it amazing? David, with his limited knowledge and with the Holy Spirit's help, brought to us a phenomenal truth. Without even realizing maybe what he was talking I know he knew what he was talking about in this area but I mean to the magnitude that we understand it and we want to sit back and whine and cry over our little pittance of a problem when the great creator of the heavens and the earth has it all under control. Today, one of the kids was having difficulty staying awake in class. Surprise. Probably been up, staying up till three or four o'clock in the morning and sleeping all day. 
And I called his name a couple of times, and finally he said, I'm sorry, Mr. Lamb, I worked last night. And I, and I, I go like this. And he said, what's that? And I said, that's the world's smallest violin playing. My heart bleeds for thee. He goes, really, Mr. Lamb? I said, I have no sympathy for you. You're a third of my age. I went to bed after midnight, got up at five this morning. I'm not asleep, and I'm not complaining about it. And I said, and by the way, he said, what's that? I said, the world's smallest orchestra playing. My heart bleeds for thee. Sometimes I, you know, I tell you, you don't want to know what's in this brain up here, but, I mean, this is my pea brain. I think sometimes God is going. Because we are so focused on our little measly little corner of the world and we cannot trust him to take care of us. May we stand for prayer. Father, we thank you tonight for your blessings. and Lord, I just pray that you'd help us to realize that the expanse, the immensity of your creation is, is far beyond what we can possibly even see or fathom or, or even understand. And if we look into the heavens that declare your glory, and we, we look and, and see that, uh, Lord, that, e that everything is, is perfectly aligned according to your creation. When we focus back in to our little world, our little spot, our little speck, we can't trust you with our own lives, with our own work. Because it's too big for you to handle. Lord, help us tonight to realize that there's nothing too big for you to handle. And there's nothing too small for you to handle. And Lord, I just pray that tonight we'd be encouraged and strengthened in the Word of God. And remember that the heavens declare the glory of God. Bless our invitation is our prayer in Jesus' name.